Before beginning our discussion about dinosaurs, we need to define what a dinosaur is. The word dinosaur comes from Latin, meaning terrible lizard. However, a good scientific definition is hard to find, since they tend to include known living animals, unless specifically defined as extinct. What is known about dinosaur is known from fossils, in the form of bones, footprints, and even eggs. Dinosaurs had two basic types of hips. The first type are lizard hip dinosaurs. The second type are called bird hip dinosaurs. Ironically, birds are alleged to have evolved from the lizard hip dinosaurs and not the bird hip. Here are some of the better known types of dinosaurs. This is a Brachiosaurus. They are the largest land animals to ever walk the earth. Here is a picture showing a Diplodocus. Note the long neck with a tiny head, long thick tail, and large body. We will see more of this later on. This picture depicts a couple of oviraptors. Here is a meat-eating dinosaur known as Allosaurus. This is the most famous of all dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus rex. This picture shows Stegosaurus. This image shows both a Corythorus and Trachodon. It is possible that these are varieties of the same kind of animal. This picture shows a Styracosaurus on the left. On the right we have Monoclonius. Note the single horn. Could these be the unicorns mentioned in the Bible? This dinosaur is known as Triceratops. Styracosaurus, Monoclonius, and Triceratops are probably varieties of the same kind of animal. There are several types of reptiles associated with dinosaurs, but not actually considered dinosaurs. These include flying reptiles such as pterodactyls, shown here. This includes the Rophorhynchus pterodactyl, with the characteristic flange on the end of its tail. This will be important later on. There are also a number of types of aquatic reptiles, including the plesiosaur depicted here. According to evolutionists, dinosaurs lived between 65 and 235 million years ago, during what they called the Metazoic Era. The Metazoic Era is divided into three periods, Cretaceous, Jurassic, and Triassic. This is the image that evolutionists want you to get when you think about dinosaurs. Millions of years of suffering and death before man. However, the next slide is a much more accurate picture of dinosaurs. Yes, this is a more accurate picture of dinosaurs because they lived with man. However, truth may be stranger than fiction. It turns out that there is evidence that man and dinosaurs lived together. Some of this evidence can be found in the Nazca tombs in the deserts of Peru. These tombs often preserve amazing artifacts of the Nazca culture, which dates to about 700 AD. This includes pottery that depicts an animal resembling a dinosaur. It also includes tapestry depicting living dinosaurs. This indicates that they were still alive at the time, and that the ancient Peruvians saw them. Another example are what are called the Ica stones. These are ceremonial burial stones of the Nazcas. They are known to be at least a couple hundred years old, now some of the local people claim to have carved the ones they are selling. They do this largely to stay out of jail for selling them, since these stones are national treasures of Peru. However, genuine Nika stones have a bacterial varnish over them that covers the drawings as well. This varnish takes at least a couple hundred years to form, so these stones must be at least 200 years old. About a third of the Nika stones depict identifiable types of dinosaurs. This one depicts a human being fighting an allosaurus. No indication as to who won. This stone depicts a seropod dinosaur with people. Interestingly enough, fossilized seropod skin discovered after the stones were discovered show that some seropod dinosaurs had boneless spines on their backs as depicted on the stone. This is from a Mesopotamian cylinder seal dated to about 3300 BC depicting seropod dinosaurs. The legs and feet clearly fit those of seropods, and the artist drew a convincing body of a seropod. This hints that he had actually seen one. This is a Roman mosaic from about 200 AD. It depicts two long-necked sea dragons in a manner similar to other ancient dinosaur-like depictions. In Natural Bridges National Park in Utah, a collection of petroglyphs can be found under one of the spectacular bridges in White Rock Canyon. These petroglyphs were drawn by the Anazi somewhere between 400 and 1300 AD. One of the petroglyphs is a clear representation of a seropod dinosaur. Australian Aboriginal folklore has references to plesiosaur-like creatures. Elders of the Kaka Yayanji Aboriginal tribe in far north Queensland, Australia, relate stories of Yeriu a creature which used to inhabit rainforest waterholes. This painting depicts a creature remarkably similar to a plesiosaur, showing an outline of the gastrointestinal tract. This indicates that the animals were hunted and butchered. The natural question is that if dinosaurs have always lived with man, why aren't they mentioned in the Bible? Well, first of all, who said they aren't? 
Now you will not find the word dinosaur in the Bible, but there's a good reason for this. The King James Version of the Bible was translated in 1611, but the word dinosaur was not invented until 1841. And most modern translations were done by people who think that dinosaurs lived millions of years before man. The fact is that the Bible does refer to dinosaurs. It calls them dragons. Dragons are mentioned 37 times in the Bible. They're mentioned six times with known real animals in Deuteronomy 32, 33, Job 30, 29, Psalms 91, 13, Isaiah 34, 13, Isaiah 43, 20, and Jeremiah 14, 6. Isaiah 14, 29, and Isaiah 36 refer to flying serpents, and both times are with known real animals. This could be a description of a pterodactyl. Job chapter 40, 15 through 24, describes an animal called behemoth. It is described as having a tail like a cedar tree, probably a brachiosaurus or some type of dinosaur. Some people claim that behemoth was an elephant or a hippopotamus. The problem is that neither of them have tails even remotely resembling a cedar tree. Their tails look like little pieces of rope. It has even been suggested that this is a reference to an elephant's trunk. However, it assumes that God and Job did not know the difference between a trunk and a tail. Now as you read this passage, Behold now Behemoth, which I made with thee. He eateth grass as an ox. Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar, and the sinew of his stones are wrapped together. Job 40, 15 through 17. Now the natural image one gets from reading this passage is of a seropod dinosaur. This is particularly true of kids. In fact, when I first read this passage as a kid, the image I got was that of a seropod dinosaur. The simple fact is that even a child can see through the claim that behemoth was an elephant or hippopotamus. Also, God takes all of Job chapter 41 to describe a very fierce sea reptile called Leviathan. The description is of a very intimidating, fire-breathing sea reptile. Now Job 41.21 says, His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. This is clearly a description of a fire-breathing animal. Some people have claimed that Leviathan is a crocodile. However, have you ever heard of a fire-breathing crocodile? Besides that, it is referred to as the dragon that is in the sea in Isaiah 27.1. So Leviathan is clearly not a crocodile. The next natural question is, if dinosaurs have always lived with man, were they on the ark? According to Genesis 6, 19-20, Noah is told to take two of every kind of land animal on the ark, Dinosaurs were land animals, and so dinosaurs were on the ark. Is this possible, you may ask? After all, dinosaurs were kind of big. That's true, but first of all, the ark was a very big boat. Second, dinosaurs were reptiles, and reptiles grow all their lives. So the really big dinosaurs that you see in museums, they were probably quite old. In fact, the largest dinosaur that ever lived hatched out of an egg that's smaller than a football. So all Noah would have had to have done was had young adults or babies on the ark, and the dinosaurs would have fit without any problems at all. History has many stories about dragons. In fact, often histories written at the time have accounts about people encountering and even killing dragons, and the descriptions of these dragons often match known types of dinosaurs. In fact, the standard picture of a dragon is an amalgam of various types of dinosaurs. St. George is the patron saint of England, and he is said to have killed a dragon. He was an early Christian martyred under Roman rule in 303 AD. In fact, there are many dragon legends from England. Near the village of Bald Dragon is a carved stone of Pictish origins. It is said to mark the place where a knight called Martin killed the dragon that devoured nine maidens. South Yorkshire has a legend about a flying dragon that once lived in the well, called the Serpent's Well. It was often seen flying east to Cawthorn Park. It is said that a small dragon once lived in Yorkshire. It was killed by a shepherd named Armoroid, wielding nothing other than his shepherd's crook. This is possibly related to the Kellington Serpent Stone, which is a grave marker with a cross and a serpent on it. The Greek philosopher Herodotus described small flying reptiles in ancient Egypt and Arabia that sound amazingly like the Rampharentius pterodactyl. Herodotus' account is as follows. There is a place in Arabia to which I went on hearing of some winged serpents. And when I arrived, I saw bones and spines of serpents in such quantities as it would be impossible to describe. The form of the serpent is like that of a water snake, but he has wings without feathers, and as like as possible to the wings of a bat. 
So they are described as having the same snake-like body and bat-like wings, uh, Rampharynchus. These animals could sometimes be found in the spice groves. Aristotle said that the existence of these creatures in Ethiopia was common knowledge. Ancient China has many dragon legends, though they do tend to give them more of a snake-like body. In the ancient Babylonian epic of Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh is said to have killed the dragon. There are many other examples. In fact, when you look at the standard picture of a dragon, it seems to be an amalgam of various kinds of dinosaurs. They often have wings like a pterodactyl, as well as Rampharynchus's tail flange. They are often depicted as having the general body shape of a Diplodocus, the teeth of a Tyrannosaurus rex, claws like a raptor, plates like a Stegosaurus, and horns like a Stegosaurus. Unfossilized soft tissue has been found inside a fossilized Tyrannosaurus rex bone. The soft tissue includes complete blood vessels and blood cells. It is obvious that these are unfossilized, even to the naked eye. This flexible branching structure was found inside this T-Rex bone, and it has justifiably been identified as blood vessels. Now, blood vessels should not be there if the bone was really 65 million years old. These microscopic structures were squeezed out of the blood vessels. They look like blood cells, as the researchers have said. How could these cells have lasted for 65 million years? This strongly supports the claim that dinosaurs are not 65 million plus years old. One common question asked by both creationists and evolutionists is, how did the dinosaurs go extinct? Currently, most evolutionists would say that it was an asteroid impact that killed them. The next runner-up is volcanic activity. Some creationist theories include the flood, being hunted to extinction by man, and that they could not adjust to post-flood environmental changes. Now, all theories on the extinction of dinosaurs have one assumption in common, and that is that dinosaurs are extinct. So the first question we need to ask is, did the dinosaurs go extinct? It turns out that there is evidence that the answer is no. Some dinosaurs may still be alive. Lake Champlain is a very big lake between New York and Vermont. And some folks have reported seeing the Lake Champlain monster, also called Champ. This photograph was taken by Sandy Mancy. She and her husband and two kids watched it for 10 minutes. It was taken in 1977. Pete Peterson of Cleveland, Ohio, was walking on the beach in 1992 when he found this dead baby creature lying on the beach of Lake Erie. Being a taxidermist, he took it home and mounted it. It is about three feet long, it has four flippers, and a tail sort of like that of a fish. And it has something like patches on the side of its cheeks. Dr. Carl Ball bought it, and it is in his museum in Glen Rose, Texas. DNA analysis showed no match to any living animal. A creature called the Cornish Sea Serpent has been seen in the English Channel. This picture was taken in 1976. In 1962, five teenagers from Pensacola, Florida decided to go scuba diving out to a sunken ship about two miles off the coast. Edward Brian McCleary was the only survivor. They saw a creature, and he described it as, The neck was about 12 feet long, brownish green, and smooth looking. The head was like that of a sea turtle, except more elongated and with teeth. There appeared to be what looked like a dorsal fin when it dove under for the last time. Also, as best as I am able to recall, the eyes were green with oval pupils. His four friends appeared to have been eaten by it. He heard them scream as they went under finally made it to the ship, the top of which protruded above the water. He stayed there most of the night, and early that morning, swam ashore where he was found by the rescue unit. He was the only survivor. Michele Abumbe lives in the Congo swamps. It is said that this is the most miserable swamp in the world. It is right on the equator. The temperature is 95 degrees and 95% humidity all the time, with mosquitoes all over the place. The swamp was visited in 1980 by a team headed by Dr. Royal Mackle, from the University of Chicago. They showed the natives pictures in a kid's coloring book of a Diplodocus and asked them, have you ever seen an animal that looked like this? The natives said, oh yeah, that's Michele Abumbe. He lives in the swamp. Michele Abumbe are about 20 feet long, most of which are neck and tail. 
body is about the size of a hippopotamus, but the total length is about 20 feet. This picture shows Michele Abumbe on the left compared to a native. It is claimed that the animals live in caves underwater, barely sticking their necks out to grab plants on the side of the river. Their favorite food is the Malumbo plant. Here is Dr. Mackle holding one of the Malumbo plants. It has a fruit kind of like an apple, only harder. They found footprints of the creature on the shore. The footprints had claw marks on them. Elephants and hippos are about the same size, but they do not have claws on their feet. This is Marcelin Agnaga, a biologist from the Congo. He went on one of the expeditions into the swamp. He said, you know, I live in the Congo, and I didn't know that 500 miles up the river from my house, the swamp had stories of dinosaurs. He claims to have seen one. He drew a sketch of what he saw on the blackboard for Time Life's Mysterious Creatures. Unfortunately, the humidity in the swamp makes getting good photographs extremely difficult. There have been reports of living Diplodocus dinosaurs in the Amazon jungle. In 1907, Colonel Perry Fawcett of the British Army was sent to mark the boundaries between Brazil and Peru. He was an officer in the Royal Engineers and was known as a meticulous reporter of facts. In the swamps there, he saw an animal he believed to be Diplodocus. Natives of that part of the Amazon who were showing drawings of a Diplodocus said, Yep, we've got those living out there in the swamp. Many tribes around the region report the same thing. Mebilu, Mebilu, Mebilu means animal with planks growing out of its back. From the name and the description, it could be a living stegosaurus, which has large planks coming out of its back. Natives say the planks are not like the serrated ridges of a crocodile. Unfortunately, the natives could not give an accurate description of the body, head, tail, and feet, since the animal was submerged in water. So the exact identity is uncertain, but there is evidence that hints at its stegosaur. In 1947, anthropologist Christopher von Fuhrhemmerdorf wrote about a tribe known as the Apu Tanis, who lived in a very isolated and nearly unknown valley in the Himalayas. The valley covers 20 square miles. Despite the altitude, it was swampy and thickly forested. According to local tradition, it was once a marshy swamp inhabited by lizard-like monsters called Buru. A more detailed account of the Buru was given to Charles Stoner, who visited the valley with an Indian official. According to the Apu Tanzas, the Buru was a reptile about 15 feet long, including neck and tail. It had a triangular-shaped head, flat teeth except for four fang-like teeth, stumpy legs with heavily clawed feet. It had a long, powerful tail with a row of armored plates along the tail's length. The color was a mottled blue and black with a whitish underbelly. The description sounds much like a stegosaurus. The large reptiles generally kept to themselves and out of the way of man. The best time to actually see a buru was during the hot summer months when they would sun themselves on the shore of the lake habitat. They stayed in the muddy lake bottom in the cooler months. In 1948, an expedition went to the valley in search of buru. Unfortunately, they heard that buru may have been extinct in the Aputances Valley, but alive and well in the nearby Rillo Valley. So the group switched their focus to Rillo, but came up empty. The Aputances continued to insist that the burrow did live in their valley and still does live in Rillo. There may be some pterodactyl still alive. This is supposed to be a genuine photo of a pterodactyl that was shot down by Confederate soldiers during the Civil War. A film crew shooting a movie in the South took this picture. They thought they would try to reproduce a famous and mysterious photo thought to be lost. This seems to be the real one. Indians of the Western United States called them the Thunderbird. Here's an apparently old photo of a man holding a rhomphorhynchus. Note the flange on the tail. There have been reports out of Africa of living pterodactyls called Kangomato. A man named Romandi from Kenya, Africa, told Ken Hovland, You mentioned that there were pterodactyls still alive? We've got them in my village back home. 
They're only about a four foot wingspan. They come out at night. Nobody likes them. Their favorite food is rotting human flesh. So if you bury someone and don't bury them deep enough, Congo Mato will dig them up and eat them. The African explorer, Meland, was told about a creature named Kangamato that lived in the swamps near Rhodesia in the Congo. The natives told them it was a bird, but not exactly a bird. More like a lizard with wings of skin like a bat's. When he showed them pictures of a pterodactyl and other animals, all immediately went for the pterodactyl, excitedly muttering, Kangamato. There have been reports from missionaries of similar creatures in Venezuela on Suriname, an island off the coast of New Guinea. In conclusion, man and dinosaurs have lived together, and dragon is the old word for the animal we now call dinosaurs. The Bible refers to dinosaurs, but it calls them by their old name, dragons. There have been sightings of dinosaurs in modern times. They may not have gone extinct. Some dinosaurs may still be alive today. Now they are rare and live in remote areas, so you don't have to worry about being eaten by a T-Rex on your way home. This is because living dinosaurs would pose a problem for the geologic time scale. All such accounts are dismissed by evolutionists as anecdotal if there are no pictures, and they don't take pictures seriously either. However, it is 100% consistent with the biblical account. 